you know, um, I started wrestling actually when I was 16 years old, and uh, I can remember memories of uh, getting out of high school and uh, getting in the car, my dad and I, and we would go travel all over Ohio, West Virginia, different parts. But uh, I can remember wrestling a guy by the name of Wild Bull Curry. And it was so funny because he was the meanest, toughest looking guy. He had great big cauliflowered ears, and he had great big eyebrows, and he'd come out there and start wrestling. And you have to imagine, I just got done watching these guys on TV. From the time I was five years on on, that's what I wanted to be, a professional wrestler. If people ask me, said, what do you want to do when you grow up? I want to wrestle. Not only that, if you wanted to talk to me, I don't really talk about professional wrestling. But it was so weird, Flying Bird Curry and Wild Bull Curry, guys that were not necessarily an idol, but guys I looked up to and admired on television because back then, number one, we didn't have internet. Number two, we got to see wrestling one hour a week. In Ohio, it was Bobo Brazil, the Sheik, Flying Foot Curry, Wild Bull Curry, Tampa, Purple, guys like that. So, me wrestling them at such a young age, it was really, really awesome. And uh, there, were, there were so many things that I remember about that. I mean, as far as just the idea of wrestling, and the Currys had a lot of magnetism. Because here was Wild Bull Curry, who was the father, he looked real mean, and his hair was stand up. It almost looked like the devil, and he had the cauliflower flowered ears and the big, big eyebrows. And his son was like a matinee idol flying for Curry with a great baby face. And me and whoever it may be, would be Dr. Jerry Graham Jr., Jerry Gaffney, Alba Toledo, or Manjong Sarnoff, who was the guy we'd be wrestling him in a tag team match. If Flying Fred Curry hit me in the chair or Wild Bull Curry and him, the whole crowd would stand up and throw their chairs and hit him. I mean, it was just that type of, they had that magnetism, that special something that a lot of wrestlers today lack. You know, so much to wrestling today, it looks like plastic to me. And why I say it looks like plastic is everybody looks the same. And Ricky Morton said the best, and we've said it so many times, that you can take one head off one guy and put it on another body, and you wouldn't miss it. But you know, back in those days, there was all shapes and sizes, all different kinds of looks. And that's what kind of the appeal was also. Not everybody looked exactly the same. I mean, we all wore those trunks, and that's another thing. At least this has got guys doing that today. In these independent wrestling, a lot of times you go to the matches, guys will be wearing whatever. But you see, when I went to the wrestling, when I was even younger before I started, the guys wore wrestling boots and wrestling trunks. When I go down to see the Cincinnati Reds, I expect them to wear uniforms. When I go watch the Bengals or the Browns, I expect them to be in football outfit. When you're a professional wrestler, another thing I got mad about the other night, guys, and I went on, I seen a sign on the back door. It said, Workers Only. And it made me live it. Because I'm going to tell you something, guys. From 1970, I started setting up ring when I was 11. They would never allow us in the dressing room, never talk out of school. You understand what I'm saying? It was protected. But you see, I always dreamed of being a professional wrestler, not a professional worker. I'm not a worker. I'm a professional wrestler that happens.